Hello, my friends. Today, for our art lesson, we are going to be doing a drawing. Um, it'll be a little bit, a little bit different type of drawing than you might do um, on your own. Kind of a, I would almost call it like a reverse drawing. <laughs> Okay, so for your lesson today, you will need a pencil, preferably one with an eraser on the end of it. Mine doesn't have an eraser on the end of it, so I have a, I have like a stick eraser here. Um, I also have an eraser on the end of this like mechanical pencil that I might use. You don't want to use a mechanical pencil for this. You want like a regular pencil, and you want it to be nice and sharp. Mine is not nice and sharp, uh, so I'm gonna start by sharpening it. Oh, my camera's gonna wiggle. Okay, so I have my nice sharp pencil. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna color in an area of my paper. I'm gonna actually even start by making my paper a little bit smaller. If you want to make paper smaller without using scissors, um, pro tip, one thing that you can do is if you just fold it back and forth a bunch of times, um, you're going to weaken all the fibers in your piece of paper. Um, paper's made up of fiber. It's made up of usually wood fibers plus um, things that kind of bind those fibers together. So, you know, like like uh, in paper towels and stuff like that, a lot of the times you can see the fibers a lot better. Uh, for something like drawing paper, you don't really want to see the fiber. So you don't, you know, so they're really like nice, thin, fine papers that are like really well put together. So if I bend this paper back and forth a bunch of times, I'm gonna have like a weak spot in my paper where I can then hold it down really well and it'll just like, easily pull off. So I've made my paper a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go with the, the slightly bigger piece. Um, so what you're gonna want to do here is you're gonna want to color in an area of this paper, not so much with like the tip of my pencil. If I use the very, very tip of my pencil and I try to color this in, it's gonna take a really long time. So this is what it looks like to color in with the tip of my pencil. What I want to use is like the side. So I'm holding my pencil like this. So like I have my hand open, I grab it like I'm a, like a little kid that's about to draw with the pointy side up. And then I take my thumb and my finger and I kind of hold the pencil like this so that I'm putting the side of the pencil on the paper. And then I can shade in a bigger area at once. So on my paper, I'm just going to shade in a pretty big area. I might rotate the pencil a little bit as I go. Oh, my, pa my, my camera is jiggling so much. I'm going to try and go a little bit slower. So maybe my camera will jiggle less. Oh man. So I hope none of you get seasick because like, oh boy. <laughs> you might have to sharpen your pencil doing this. Um, you're not really gonna wear down the tip. Like my pencil's still very sharp, but um, I am using a lot of the lead up still. So I'm gonna give my pencil a little bit of a sharpen here. Chirp, 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 chirp. If you don't have a pencil sharpener, you might want to even do a smaller area of a paper so that you um, don't have to sharpen your pencil. Okay, sorry, sorry, uh, friends that are jiggling, which is all of you. I don't know why I was acting like it was just gonna be some of you. perfect, but believe it or not, that will probably be okay. So then what you want is a piece of um, paper towel. Um, these are the really cheap school paper towels. Those will work fine. Even something like a little piece of toilet paper bunched up would probably work if you don't have paper towels in your house. Um, you can use your, like, your hand for this, but your hand will get super dirty. So I'm going to not recommend that. So I have my crunched up little ball of paper. 
And then I'm gonna rub. I'm gonna rub all of that graphite and it's gonna get pretty nice and smooth. The areas that weren't quite as filled in are gonna get nice and filled in. And ooh, when I show you what this piece of paper towel looks like, you're gonna be like, ooh boy, glad that is not my hand. It is like black. <laughs> Because a lot of that graphite that I've picked up, right? Like if I rub this here, you can oh, you can't ooh, you can kind of see it. My my camera doesn't my camera doesn't do well transferring from like a fairly dark surface to then like lots of white all at once. <laughs> um, so I have a lot of graphite on my paper. Some of you guys might have done like a similar uh, a similar thing. Like at the top of your paper, you might have like. I did this when I was a kid, like colored in an area. I did this a lot when I wrote my name. I'm not gonna recommend that you do this on your school papers. Uh, it's distracting to you to do this. Um, I guess I'm gonna just rub with my finger. Ooh, look how dirty, Yeah, yucky. Um, <laughs> it's not really yucky, but it's kinda, it's, it's a little yucky. Um, I did this a lot when I wrote my name, so I would color in a whole area, and then I would erase to write my name. I don't know why I found this so interesting when I was a kid, but I did. And I, uh, I recently saw a, I was on like the, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, like kids website, and I saw this like presented as a lesson. I was like, ooh, this is a good lesson to talk about value. So value in artwork. Um, so, you know, it, when we talk about value, um, you might talk about values, like family values, or like, uh, you know, like your, 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 like what you, what you personally think is important. That's, that's one word for the, that's one meaning for the word value. But here we're talking about lights and darks. <laughs> that's value. Uh, dark value is darker like this. Light value is lighter like this. Um, so what you're doing here essentially is you're starting with a mid-tone on your big piece of paper and then you can pull out highlights to create your drawing and then go back in with your pencil and add darker spots as well. So this is what I did when I was a kid a lot. This is what like, uh, reminded me of this was uh, making a big swatch of um, uh, graphite on my paper and then writing my name in it. I bet my teachers hated this because like... When you touch this, it gets all over your fingers. I bet they were like, oh man, that kid, terrible. <laughs> um, I, I think most of my teachers liked me when I was a kid. Nah, nah, I, don't know. I don't know, I don't know, man. <laughs> so, you have your piece of paper, you have put graphite all over it, and then rubbed it with a paper towel to make it nice and smooth. Again, I highly recommend a paper towel and not your hand because look how much like yucky graphite is on that. And then if this was all over your hand, when you touch other things, it's gonna like transfer all that graphite. It's gonna be super yucky, just don't do it, don't do it. Um, so then you can go right in with an eraser and start to draw something, or you could go in with a pencil. I'm gonna go in with an eraser first. I'm gonna recommend eraser first. Um, so I did this, I did like a practice one of these already. This was what I made for my practice one. I made an apple, so I picked out like a highlight. So this is right, I'm, I'm imagining that there's light shining on this object. This is my little sun, it represents <laughs> light. So there's light shining on this object. The light is hitting the apple, making this area of the apple a lot lighter. The light isn't hitting this side of the apple, so it's a lot darker on this side of the apple. So what I did was I went in with my eraser. I kind of roughly sketched out the shape of my apple, like where my little stem was gonna be. And then I really picked out that highlight. And then I went back in with my pencil. I added the kind of like, uh, like low light where there is not a lot of light or the shadow where there isn't light hitting the object. And then the actual shadow where the surface that the apple is on the apple is blocking the light from hitting that surface. Okay, so let's go back to the piece I'm working on right now. So hopefully you are like me and this is the spot that you're in. Um, ooh, I gotta think about something to draw. Ooh, I wanna do a tree. 
I want to do a tree. That's what I think I want to do. Ooh, maybe a flower. <sighs> yeah, I want to do a flower. Um, so you don't have to do something where there's like a lot of value, but it's always a, it's always a, a fun, I think it's fun. I really like, I really like value drawing. I really like teaching value drawing. So I'm going to make, I think, kind of like a sunflower. And I'm going to imagine that the light is coming from this direction on my sunflower. But first, I'm just going to get the, like, outline. And I'm, I am using kind of a fancier eraser than you probably have. So I'm actually going to switch to the eraser that's on the, just, like, the end of this mechanical pencil. So you can see that, like, it's, it's absolutely not necessary to have a super fancy eraser. You do want an eraser with kind of a good point on it. Um, and an eraser where it's not too, too low on your pencil. I like to uh, turn my paper when I'm drawing. It makes, it makes a, a, a worse, <laughs> makes a worse film, <laughs> but it, it does make a better drawing. And I would encourage you to turn your paper as you're drawing. It's be a little bit easier. And I'm kind of going over these lines more than once. If I act like I'm just drawing and just draw a line, I'm going to see it a little bit, but like not as, not as much as I want to. Okay. So I have the basic outline of my flower. I think I want to do a second set of petals though. Um, just because this looks a little bit simple to me. I'm going to do a second set of petals. And again, you don't have to do a flower. You could do a flower. Um, you could do an apple like I did. You could do... I, I'm even okay with just like a really cool design. Um, I think you're, you're experimenting with using value. And you're experimenting with using an eraser as a drawing tool. That's really the, the target for today. Is to experiment using a drawing tool in a way that you would not traditionally have used it in say like math class, right? Like we would never like <laughs> do our math this way. This is never, you're never gonna do a, a math problem by first covering your entire paper <laughs> in graphite. Um, so we're, you could not use a mechanical pencil to put the graphite on the paper, but for adding pencil lines, you could. You could use a mechanical pencil. I'll do that just because I have it in my hand. Um, let's see. Okay, so I really want to pick where my light's coming from. I'm gonna draw a little tiny sunshine here so that I can remember. I might crop that off later. Okay, so I know that this side of the flower is gonna have more light. So I'm gonna go into these petals and I'm going to lighten the value. So I'm thinking about the fact that more light is hitting these petals on this side. Now a flower is a three-dimensional object. So parts of the flower are gonna stick up and parts of it aren't. So it's a little bit complicated. You might not quite know, um, really like, you, you know, if I'm thinking like that this petal kind of curls up, right? Then the tip of it is gonna get more light hitting it than the part that's near the petal. So I might do that. I might lighten just the tips of these because I might think the tips of the petals stick up a little bit and more light is able to hit them. I think this petal that's behind though, I don't think a lot of light would hit it. So I'm gonna leave it the way it is. This one, I think that maybe this side of this petal is sticking up a little bit more. Same with this one. And this, I think a lot of light would hit. This is a, this is um, a lot easier to do if you're looking at a real image. <laughs> um, I think this petal would not have a lot of light hitting it. So in general, ooh, and you kind of want to avoid doing what I just did, which is wiping your whole paper. Um, so I've gone in, I've added more highlights on this side and not as many on this side. Um, I think I want to make some kind of like circular lines in there. That looks pretty good. So I've made, added some highlights. I think now what I want to do is go in. 
Ooh, I really don't like using the mechanical pencil. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> I'm not a, like, I like mechanical pencils for drawing lines. Don't like them for drawing anything else. <laughs> um, I think I'm actually going to stop talking. Um, and I'm just going to do the rest of this in a like time lapse. Um, so what I'm doing, I'll say real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I'm going to add dark values in spaces where I think the light would not hit my flower. So we'll do one petal together. So I'm going into this petal and I'm adding in where I think the light isn't going to hit as much. So I think kind of like that. Um, then I, I'll probably do all of the like shading, but I would then probably go in and I would add a little bit of definition with some lines. So adding a, maybe a little bit of texture, right? I know that like sometimes some flowers have these kind of lines on them. So I might add this kind of lines. I might shade them in a little bit. So the darker the area, where the less light is hitting my flower. I usually want to have kind of a smooth transition. I want the tip of this to be a little bit darker too. Okay, so that's, I think that's one petal looking pretty good. The rest of this we'll do in a time lapse. So you can see, you can pause and watch what I do. Or you can try and work along, but pause and watch what I do first. And this is a, so this is a fluid process, right? Like I just darkened this area that I think I didn't want to darken. I go, I go back with my eraser and I fix it. Oh, it's so shaky. I'm sorry. So um, one alternative to like um, blending with your finger, because it's, it's a little bit hard to control blending with your finger, is to take a little bit of paper towel and just kind of roll it up. Um, they, they, they make tools uh, that are specifically made for this. They're kind of like little paper sticks. <laughs> um, but honestly, you can kind of achieve the same result with just a little piece of like well rolled up paper towel. Um, and that can, honestly, I think it blends a lot better than your finger does. Um, you know, with something like charcoal, um, using your finger might be better because it's just, it's a lot looser of a pigment. But, um, and sometimes like the, you know, like your skin, how your skin works is it, it you know, it, needs to keep itself hydrated so it doesn't like crack and open and open to you know be open for disease and stuff like that um so your skin has oil on it um that keeps it hydrated and moist <laughs> um but sometimes that like little bit of oil on your skin will n not work well for blending um so i would really encourage you to not blend with your fingers but to instead blend with um, a little piece of paper towel.
I'm gonna kind of finish off this paper by like blending this stuff out to the edges a little bit. Okay, I would say that's done. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, so again, what I did was I put a mid-tone, it's called a mid-tone, um, all over my entire paper by using the side of my pencil, not the point of my pencil, right? So not like these, like these. Um, to put graphite all over my paper, I used a paper towel to blend it. This is an important step. This would not look probably good at all if I didn't blend it with this graphite, um, with this paper towel. Then I went in with my eraser, kind of sketched out what I wanted to draw. Then I went in with back and forth, really, between the pencil and the eraser to um, add different values and details. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed doing this project. Um, and remember, it's okay if yours doesn't look like mine. Um, you know, when I was in second, third, fourth grade, mine wouldn't have looked like that either. Uh, so hopefully you just enjoyed learning about a new way to use a tool. Okay, guys, have a good weekend. Bye.